All right, it's a beautiful day in the bluegrass. We've been waiting on a day like this to do some good training. And uh, what we're going to work on today is uh, how, to, how to help people get their dogs to sit right beside them instead of kind of moving over in front of them. Let me show you what I mean here. Uh, take Barney, for instance. So you guys, these last few videos I've made, I took and I put some cones out in my yard. And I was telling you a, a fun way to measure the uh, precision and speed with which you can influence your dog is to do cone drills. You kind of walk around the cones this way and you, you know you make inside turns and outside turns and you walk and as you're walking you try to stop and get your dog to stop right beside you between you and the cone so it ends up being cone dog handler. Okay well so uh, I got a lot of emails people were saying Stoney we've been having fun doing that drill but we're having trouble with the precision part. Okay and I tell you where where a lot of that comes from. First thing, most people are right-handed. So you have a tendency to want to give treats with your right hand. And so to get to the treats, you put your treat pouch on your right side. Well, so when you're walking and you try to get the dog to sit, people almost invariably pull the dog up in front of them and uh, to a 90 degree angle. See how that just happened there? You see how he's moving around here? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, okay, is we're gonna move the treat pouch to the left side if you're having trouble. Then you're going to learn how to be more dexterous with your left hand. So you put your treat in your left hand and as you're walking, see, like when you pull your hand up, that'll help line that dog up uh, like it's supposed to be lined up. So you're going to get a lot better, you know, you're going to get a lot better action between the, when you're trying to line up on the cone. But it's still, it's not that easy, guys, because, you know, like you're walking and you're doing this and he comes here and the dog still ends up like that. It happens all the time, especially if you've already been doing it with your right hand a bunch. So I'm going to show you a good little trick today to clear that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to warm up. We'll do this with multiple dogs. Now when I'm working on something that requires speed and precision, uh, you know, or, or refined motor patterns, I like to go over things that don't require much in the way of precision, you know, gross motor patterns first, things that the dog's familiar with. Right, so you guys know I get every dog out here every day and I work on this course, you know. And, so uh, while I'm working on this course, I'm building a common vocabulary with the dog. I'm building the dog's ability to stay focused under distraction. And uh, I'm making sure the dog has good proprioception or body awareness, you know. So I'm walking this dog here, and Barney's been here for a little while. He's an awesome dog. So he knows how to do this stuff. So this is just our warm-up, you know. We're going to kind of speed him up, let him go fast. Good dog, so we can slow him down. And what that kind of stuff does, guys, it gets a dog, you know, gets the handler and the dog gelling together, you know. Good dog. Again, all very familiar stuff. Very good, Barney. Easy. Wait. Very nice. All right, so Barney's, Barney's shown me that he's willing to work, and he's, uh, you know, shown me that he's warmed up by doing the small challenges course like he's supposed to. Now let's go over here. And what I'm going to do, come over here, cameraman. Let me show him what we've got set up. <clears throat> guys this is what's called a cattle panel it's just a it's just a piece of rectangular fencing it's pretty cheap you can get them at your farm farm store for about uh, uh, what are they Eli? about twenty dollars thirty dollars whatever you know but but this right here like guys especially if you run your little small dog training shop or kennel uh, these right here will help you for a lot of different things uh, and what we're going to use today we're going to use this like it's a wall but it's a portable wall plus you can see through it, and so from my perspective, it puts uh, the dog in a position of having to be a little bit more responsible than doing this same exercise with an actual wall. All right, so we're going to come back over here. <clears throat> and what I'm going to use this wall for, or what's, what sometimes you'll hear me refer to it as a side block, is to keep the dogs behind from flipping out when I go to stop when I'm healing. So I'm walking them, and I want to stop, and I'll say, sit. Good. Look here. Good. Come around here, camera. Get behind me a little bit and see. Now, so what happened here, even if I was to be doing this with my right hand, the dog's bottom can't flip out in front of me. Do you see how that works? Right. I'm going to move up a couple of feet. Let's go. Sit. Good. And he ends up right there in front of me. Now, so <clears throat> let's say that you're having a little bit of trouble with your speed and precision on your sits as it relates to the cones. How about you just do a wall drill or a side block drill and you do the cones can be for weaving and inside and outside turns for a week or two. And uh, so look, I'm going to bring the dog over here to the cones and I'm going to work on my inside turns. Very nice. 
and the inside turns are always easy. The outside turns are where you lose your dog a little bit. As you as you walk, see, you're, you're, he has to take more steps. So dogs have a tendency to lag a little bit on these outside turns. Don't worry about it. Just uh, take and use your treat to kind of put the dog where you want him. So on your inside turns, bring your treat back here next to your hip a little bit. And on your outside turns, <coughs> bring your treat out to about your belly button level until you get the hang of it. And then once you get the hang of it, you don't even have to use the treats anymore. Remember guys, treats, leashes, any of that kind of stuff, it's just like training wheels on a bike. You just gotta use it till you don't have to use it anymore. Now I'm gonna give you another view of how to use this side block. <clears throat> so I'm walking, now watch what happens here. I move towards the block, sit, and look at this. See how, the, see how this block gives me perfect precision? See, it's the block, the dog, and me. And so when I, you know, once I start getting a high rate of compliance with speed and precision as it relates to the block, then I can go ahead and introduce the cone into the drill. Let's go. So I'm going to walk and I'm going to do one more on the, <clears throat> on the block here. Sit. Now look, he's not, he's not giving me any trouble at all. That's perfect. So I'm giving him a fat treat. You give him a fat treat, give him time to eat. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Get up here. Now I'm going to walk up here to my second cone, and I'm going to see if I can get uh, the precision that I'm looking for. Sit. That's perfect. Cone, dog, stony. That's what I'm looking for. Let's go. <clears throat> I'm going to come around this cone here. Very nice. I'm going to come back, see if I can get the precision that I'm looking for. Sit. Perfect. Cone, dog, stony. Couldn't ask for better. Now I'm going to go back here and show you one more thing that you can do with your side block. <coughs> go ahead, cameraman. Get this one more time so they can see. Like, here's the side block. Here's the dog. Here's stony. Sit. Perfect compliance. Can't swing his bottom out. Let's go. Now you can also use your side block as a back block, right? So I'm going to walk up here. And uh, I'm going to pivot, and as I pivot, sit. Now, see that this is what I talk about. This, see how the dog, see on that pivot there. See how he wanted to bring his bottom out to that side, right? That's going to happen to you sometimes. So I'm not going to reward him for that. I'm just going to back up a little bit. And I'm going to do it again. Now I'm going to drop my hand down here with the treat, so I got a little bit more influence over him. Watch out, Charlotte. So I would get to here. Whoa, pivot. Bring my hand up. Now, there we go. That's nice and, and, and straight. Now, I'm going to give him a Darth Vader hand. Stay. Now, look, I have a back block. He can't go backwards. Good boy. Stay. I'm going to walk away. And that's how he's going to win, you know. And that's perfect. All right. So, let's try it with another dog. Oh, good boy, Barney. You're off of work. Yes, you're smarty and you're off of work. Let's see what we have here. We got a little yellow lab. It's 14 weeks old. Oh, you can big nerds get out of the way. Let this little nerd. Sadie, Sadie. Come on, Sadie. It can be your turn. Oh, I'll get these big dogs away from you. So let's warm Sadie up on the course. Oh, come on, come on. Up. Good. Remember, we're always working from the general to the specific. The, you know, you work from the things you know to the things that you don't know. Very nice, Sadie. You are a smarty. Up. Very nice. Up. Very good. Easy. Oh, you're a very good dog. Easy. Very nice. Up, up. Good dog. Wait. Very nice. Easy. Watch out, ammo. Watch out. Up, up, up. Come on, you can do it. Very nice. Oh, you're a smarty. Wait. Easy. All right, so Sadie's doing perfectly well on the small challenges course. So we'll go over here and we'll do our side block and our cone drills. Good dog. Now, notice that I didn't give Sadie, even though she's only 14 weeks old, I didn't give Sadie any treats on that uh, course right there. She's done it a million times. She's getting to the point where the course is, doing the course with me is self-reinforcing. But now that we're moving into a different drill, I'm gonna up my treat schedule. Anytime things get harder, guys, because maybe the activity is novel or the activity is taking place under a high level of distraction, you wanna go back and come with a higher uh, value treat and come on a little faster treat schedule. Come on, Sadie. So we're gonna go over here. Oh, come on. 
and I'm going to tease her with a little treat just a couple of times. I'm going to walk up here to my side block. I'm going to ask her to sit. Good. I get perfect compliance. If y'all can see that, Barney's in the way, of course. Barney, go over that way. So I'm going to go up a little farther. Sit. Good compliance. Gets a treat. Now I'm going to go up here to my cones. Oh, good dog. And I want her to be successful with these cones. So I'll start off with something easy, like some turns. Good dog. Oh, what a good dog. Come on, come on. Now see, so I bring the treat out in front of me a little bit on the outside turns. I bring it into my body around my hip on the inside turns. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, let's do an outside turn. Oh, that's perfect. Now let's just weave through the cones. Very nice. Now we'll get up here and get you a little different view on our side block usage. Now, so I'm going to get my treat ready. As I come to my side block, I slide my left hand down my leash and sit. Look at that. How perfect that is. A 20 or what was it, Eli, 20, $30 panel? Look, guys, I mean, the best thing in dog training is always the cheap stuff, you know. But people spend too much money. Let's go. Except they don't spend enough money with their dog trainers. So <laughs> save all your money on dog equipment and, and give it to your dog trainer. All right, so we're going to side block sit. Very nice. Now, uh, same thing as with the other dog. We're also going to use, oh, if they get out of place like that, like see how I turned around to talk to you guys, and the dog is like, they wanted to, she wanted to spin around to, to where, where I was looking. Right? That, that's going to happen to you all the time, guys. Resist the urge to pull them back into place and give them a hard time. You're out having a good time with your dog. If they pivot around in front of you a little bit, they're not trying to be disobedient. They're just trying to play the game, and they're not exactly sure what the rules of the game are. So don't, don't, don't get upset. This, this stuff about sitting right beside you, it's not even important. So it's not ever worth fussing at them over. So I get here, sit. I get good compliance. Now I'm going to work on the, uh, using the side block as a back block. Let's go. So I'm going to walk up here. I'm going to pivot. Bring my hand up. Good. Darth Vader hand stay. Walk away from the dog. Come back. Give her a treat. Every day I'm going to add a little bit of time and distance. And It's going to be hard for me to add any levels of distraction because here we're always operating under such a high level of distraction anyway. Good. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so she's off work. Oh, let's see who else we can find here. We get, we get this uh, ammo. Ammo is a 17-week-old chocolate lab. Oh, and he gets excited for some good treats and some activity. Good boy. So let's knock out a gross motor pattern here. Good dog. Very nice. Just make sure that me and ammo are on the same track, on the same wavelength. Good dog, ammo. Very nice. Oh, you are a smarty. Oh, it's a good dog. Now y'all look in the look over here at this dog. That's that's a that's a wire-haired pointer. The guy sent me from over in Seattle, and he is a wild character. He gets up every morning, <laughs> and I let him out, and he starts chasing birds, and he just never stops. I mean, you know, he's got the highest endurance level of any dog that I've had out here probably in two or three years, and uh, he just loves. He's just so happy chasing birds. It's funny to watch, you know, a dog that has a real passion. For something you know no matter what that something is and that dog just literally has a passion for chasing birds and it's very interesting if I could get some birds and keep in my pocket uh, I think he would be the best trained obedience dog in the entire world good very nice oh you are a smarty wait good easy okay so ammo yes I see you buddy so ammo is doing pretty well so let's go over here and work our side block and cone exercise come on buddy Come on. So we're going to walk along our side block. Good. Sit. Look at that. Perfect compliance. Let's go. And we're going to do some little cone drills here. Inside turn. Oh, I'll show him the treat. Bring it to my hip. Very nice. Oh, you're a smarty. And outside turn. I'll lose him a little bit here, so I'll take my treat and move it to the front just a little bit. And that'll probably take about 10 days to get him to get the hang of that. Good. Inside turn. Oh, he got that one right off the bat. Very nice. All right. And uh, outside turn. Oh, very good. Now we'll weave our way back through here. Very good. Come on. Sadie, get out of the way. 
All right, we're going to come up here so you can guys see, see this uh, front side view here of the side block. Good. Sit. What? Okay. All right. That's fine. You can have a treat too. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's come out where our cone is. Get a good line on the side block. And we're going to turn the side block into a back block. So we're going to pivot. Oh, a little bit more. Good. Stay. I don't like this positioning, so I'm going to go up a little bit. Come on, let's go. And I'm going to pivot and bring my treat straight up my side. Now see this? See where he kicked out to the side there? I don't like that, so I'm going to do it again. Very nice. And so this is the thing about dog training, guys, is it, you know, like when you're watching YouTube videos, a lot of times it looks like it always goes perfectly. Well, it doesn't. You know, I don't care how many dogs you've trained, you know, because every day what you're trying to do, very nice stay is make incremental progress if you ever reach a day where there's no progress left to be made then you're done so ammo knocked that part out pretty well let's see who else we got amos amos come here buddy we got an old coon hound here he's not very old he's uh, six months old but he's a coon hound the blue tick coon hound as a matter of fact let's see if we can get him to do some of this stuff very nice amos oh good boy all right, so same rules apply. Go ahead and come do the course. Very nice, just to get warmed up. Amos was over there eating a stick or something. I'm surprised he came. Oh, good boy, Amos, what you doing? Oh, Amos is a good fella. He's a good fella, Amos, good boy. Good boy. Now these coon hounds, they're not bred to do a job in conjunction with a handler. You know, they're bred to put their nose on the ground and run off and ball and make noise and stuff. So you have to be very patient with them. Good dog. Don't push them too fast. Up. Very nice. Wait. But as long as you, you know, go slow and steady, they train up pretty well. Up. Very nice. Come on. See, he's a little bit more tentative here. That's okay, though. Good dog. Very nice. Very nice. I'm going to come in and give him a little treat there, just his leash. Very nice. All right. So Amos is... He's being pretty compliant. He's not going very fast, but that's okay. That's why you always, you know, hear people talk about how, you know, laid up on the porch like an old hound dog. They like to run and run and run, and Amos has been running this morning, and uh, then they slow down, lay around. Easy. Oh, come on. All right, so we finished the course. Amos is doing pretty good, so I'm gonna bring him over here to my side block. Oh, good boy, Amos. Let's see if we can get a nice, precise sit out of him. Sit. Perfect. I mean, couldn't be any better. Let's go. So we're going to go up here. Oh, good boy, Amos. Come on, come on. Oh, get an inside turn. Oh, very nice. Good dog. Come on, come on. And get an outside turn. Oh, now I'm going to have to reach down here and kind of speed him up on the outside. Whoa. And come to my hip with my treat and slow him down on the inside. Good dog. Very nice. Oh, you are smarty. So we'll go outside and then we'll weave. Good dogs. Good boy. Very nice. All right, we'll show you the front quarter si side of him sitting on the side block. So I'll come up to my blocking apparatus, pull my hand up. And look at that, perfect compliance, very good. Let's go, very nice. Now I'm gonna come around here and I'm gonna turn my side block into a back block. Bring him to the side, hand comes up my side. Good, dog's nice and straight. Darth Vader hand stay, good. Now it can be kinda hard to get old Coonhound to stay, so I'm gonna have to come back here and give him a few extra treats as compared to some of the other dogs. Very nice, at least my neighbor turned off his mower so they're not so much drawn to going over there right now. You're good boy, Amos. Very nice. Okay, you're a very good dog. Oh, what other kind of dog do we have out here? Charlotte, Charlotte! Oh, we got a golden doodle. It's about, uh, I don't know, maybe nine months old. Do you wanna do the course? You're a very good dog. You are a very good dog. Let's see how it works for you. Ah, oh, very nice. Good dog. 
Oh, you were smarty. Fine animal. Good dog. All right, up. Very good. Up. Very good. Up. Very nice. Come on over here. Don't hit the barrels. Don't hit the barrels. Very good. Oh, Charlotte, you're making me so proud. You are making me so proud. Good girl, wait. Good girl. No treats, no pulling, no giving me a hard time. Up, 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 up. Oh, showing me good body awareness. Oh, Charlotte, you are smarty, wait. Easy. Good. Now watch out, Amos. You had your turn. Up. Very nice. Up. Wait. Easy. All right. All right. She did it perfectly. So let's come over here. Uh, we're going this way. And use our side block to get some sitting precision. Oh, here. Look here, Amos. Get out of the way. So I'm going to walk up here to the side block and sit. That's nice and straight. Good. Let's go. Oh, it's a very nice dog. Come on, come on. Oh, so we're working inside turn here. I tease her a little bit with her treat. Oh, you're a fine animal. Then we're working outside turn here. Oh, so I bring my hand in front just a little bit. See? Good. And then bring the treat to my hip. Inside turn so I can make it nice and tight. Very nice. And outside turn. Bring my hand in front just a little bit. Oh, very good. Now we can weave between our cones and we'll get that front quartering shot of her sitting beside the side block. Very nice. Here's the side block. Little bit of tension on my leash right as I come to stop. Sit. Nice and straight. I see she's just a teeny bit behind me, so I'm not going to give her a treat for that. I'm going to bring her up a little bit. Come on, come on. Oh, a little bit farther. Oh, right there. Now that's perfect. Very nice. Sometimes you got to slow down and like right as you go to do something, you go, hey, I think I can get that a little better. But that's a trap because sometimes like if you keep trying to get a little better, you end up messing up. That's why dog training is an art, not a science. You just got to every day try to do it a little better than you did it yesterday. But don't get greedy, guys. Don't get greedy. You know, uh, uh, like if you get a dog, she's set, sitting in a nice straight line, but a little bit behind, take that for a few days and then try to bring her up. Let's go. Oh, very good dog. Now we're going to turn our side block into a back block. So I'm going to pivot right here, take my treat, pull it right up my side, and sit. Now that's about perfect right there. The sun's kind of in her eye, so you see she's not wanting to look up. Stay. Give her that Darth Vader hand. She has to stay there and be good. And I come back after a while, give her a treat. Oh, uh, you're a good dog, Charlotte. You're a good dog. Oh, you're a good dog. Yes, you are. And uh, that's it. So I hope that uh, helps you guys, you know, get your sits a little bit uh, better over here on your side. And uh, once they get a little bit over on, better on your side as it relates to the panel, then you can go ahead and move back to the cones so that you can start uh, really judging. your using the cones as a metric to judge your uh, ability to influence your dog with speed and precision. Uh, as a matter of fact, here, I'll just go ahead and show you. Uh, here, Barney, come here. So let's say, you know, once you get your, once you get your cone work done and, and it's going pretty well, let's just take Barney and go over this last part. Good dog. So <coughs> once, you're, once, you, you know, once you know that you can go up here on your side block and you can get this perfect compliance, right? See that? That's perfect compliance. Then, it's, you know, if you can do that, let's just say you go two whole weeks in a row on your side block and you get perfect compliance every time, then go ahead and start doing it with your cones. Come on, Barney. Good boy. Sit. You see? And you'll get perfect compliance on your cone. Let's go. Oh, Charlotte, watch out, nerd. So I'm going to walk, and as I'm walking, I'm trying to get the dog right by the cone. Perfect compliance. Let's go. I'll do a couple coming towards you. Come on, Barney. Good boy. So here's our cone here. Sit. Very nice. Get my treat pouch. Let's go. And 
Very good compliance, even though Charlotte is in the way. Go over there, Charlotte. Good, let's do our last cone. And right here, I bring my hand up, and I get perfect compliance. Okay, so that's the benefit of adding a side block into your training uh, program. And uh, then you can go back, oh, good girl, to using the cones to measure your speed and precision. All right, good luck, guys.